Here we are at the end of another year. 2024 is almost in the books. This is the year I officially became a senior citizen and started Medicare. And it is the year that I jumped on my bike and spent 50 days traveling alone across the United States and Canada. Even though I am now 65, I guess I am not quite done having fun and taking on challenges, and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Sure, things may change as the years roll on, but as long as I am able, I will continue to find new places to see and things to experience. It is just part of my DNA. Especially now that I am getting older, I think it is important to take stock of the past 365 days and examine mistakes I have made and lessons I have learned. I know they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I don't think that is true. In fact, I think it is essential that we old dogs continue learning and growing. So what did I learn over the course of last year and from my time on the road? Here goes. Of course, we humans are social animals and the relationships we form with each other make up a large and important part of our lives. However, it is also important, especially as we age, that we spend time with ourselves. For me, this alone time reminds me that I am still vital and capable. It gives me time to think about life and the future. Will there be a time when I should not be left alone? Well, possibly, but I hope that day is a long way off. Being alone forces me to be prepared for unforeseen circumstances and to deal with them when they arrive. Something always comes up, even if those things are small. It might just be that Denali National Park is closed due to a fire and that it is cold and rainy, but still, I have to figure out how to handle the situation, switching up plans and making the best of it. It keeps me on my toes. Traveling alone also forces us to be vulnerable. Fortunately, on my Alaska trip, nothing major happened, but still, in order to throw my leg over the bike and take that journey, I had to accept the possibility that something could happen. Over the course of 50 days, there were a couple of close calls in the form of someone attempting to turn left in front of me, and another when that big scary truck almost flipped on the Lewis and Clark Highway, but thankfully I came out unscathed. That was not the case for another unfortunate rider on the same highway, and he was the same age as me. I do not take it for granted that I was able to return home safely. As Benet Brown has said, understanding and accepting your vulnerability is the genesis of courage. I am not a naturally optimistic person. My tendency is to find the negative or the possible things that could go wrong in any given situation. True, this tendency does help me to be better prepared, but finding the good in any circumstance is something I need to make a concerted effort to do. My wife reminds me of this constantly. It comes very easy for her, but it is a skill that I have to consistently work at getting better at. On this adventure, I rode through a lot of inclement weather, cold, rain, and then two weeks of heat. There was nothing I could do about any of this other than maybe hunkering down for a few days, which is just not part of my makeup. Unless it is dangerous, I ride. One of those days in particular, which I talked about during my trip videos, was when I left Duluth, Minnesota, heading towards Devil's Lake, South Dakota. The forecast was for some heavy storms as I looked at the radar images. I started to make myself crazy about heading out in the morning. Should I ride or should I hunker down for the day? Well, ultimately, I decided to ride and it was a piece of cake. I made myself crazy for nothing. Whether you are traveling to Alaska or just trying to make your way in life, circumstances are what they are. You cannot change them. You can only adapt. 
You can prepare, you can avoid, or you can power through. This is part of why we jump on our bikes and ride. We do it to see amazing things, but we also do it to overcome the obstacles. Another thing that is not easy for me, and I think for many of us, is to give other people a break and be more forgiving. People make mistakes, I make mistakes, we all make mistakes. The guy who almost pulled in front of me made a mistake. The truck driver who ran his trailer off the road made a mistake. The guy who walked in front of me at a hotel breakfast made a mistake. Sure, all of these things, at least momentarily, triggered me to get upset, and it took a few minutes to process them, take a deep breath, and let them go. But I did let them go. What I need more work on is to not let those things get to me in the first place. As my trip went longer, I started to get weary of the road, and I let things get to me now and then. Slow pokes and packing were the big culprits. Will I ever get to the point where those things don't bother me? Well, maybe not, but I will continue to try. Forgiving and letting go is not about doing something good for those we are mad or frustrated with. Generally, they have no idea you're upset and honestly, they don't give a shit anyway. What I finally figured out is that forgiving is about letting go of all of those negative thoughts and emotions. It is about unburdening myself of the load that I don't need or want to carry. Let that shit go. On this last big adventure, I made a concerted effort to slow down and take things easy. My goal was to limit my riding time to the neighborhood of 300 miles, and I was very successful at it. Yes, there were a few days in the 400 plus range, but overall my plans worked out very well. I was never tired or fatigued, and for the most part, in very good spirits during the entire trip. As I said earlier, I got frustrated a few times, but in the grand scheme of things, and knowing what I have been like in the past, I was very happy and content on this adventure. Of course, my work status has changed over the last three years, and I'm now able to take the extra time required to travel in this way. During my working years, like most everyone else, I had to cram big trips into a limited amount of time, and that meant longer days. But now, I don't have to do that, I make no apologies for it, and I'm not going back to being in a hurry. Yes, I understand I have limited days left to live, but trying to cram as much as possible into those days is not worth it if they are spent being anxious, worried, and stressed. I had enough of that shit during the first 62 years of my life, and as I said, I'm not going back. Another thing I tried to do during my 2024 travels is to be more generous, in particular with my tips. I stopped at a number of small diners as well as large restaurants while traveling to Alaska, and they were always staffed with hard-working people, mostly women, who I knew needed the money far more than I do. As I said in one of my last videos, we never ride alone. Our adventures are supported by a multitude of people trying to support themselves and their families while working at not so glamorous jobs. The very least that I can do is to be generous with my gratuities and patronize the local establishments. To me, it just makes sense to help the people who are helping me. This is not one I have really ever had a problem with. I have always been a bit of a contrarian and have never worried too much about what the crowd was doing. In fact, I generally do the opposite. Yes, I had a Disco Sucks t-shirt. While not something new, it is a behavior that was reinforced during this year's travels. When you watch motorcycle YouTube videos or listen to podcasts, there is only one destination that seems to count during an Alaska trip, Dead Horse or Prudhoe Bay. 
I completely understand why this is a destination coveted by many and I don't put anyone down for doing it. But when I watch the videos, all I see is a long straight dirt road that leads to somewhere I don't want to go. And add to that fact that everyone is doing it and I naturally shy away. I would much rather find places that not many go. I want to do things that are different from the norm. For example, during this trip, I decided to take the adventure cruise out of Prince Rupert and see grizzlies, whales, and bald eagles. And there were no other bikes in the parking lot of my hotel or bikers on the cruise. It was something different, something unique. Riding some of the great motorcycle roads is wonderful and I will continue to seek them out. But oftentimes it is the non-bike related things that really stand out and make my travels special. So in the future, I am gonna seek out more of these not so popular places and experiences. I am going to try and live off the slab as my YouTube channel says, and try to find those things that are not so expected. Continue to ride safe, and of course, keep squeezing your lemons.